Hi everyone, uh, I'm DJ, I'm a senior data scientist at TIPCO. We're going to be talking about our analysis for the Gartner Baker around overprescription, how fueling America's opioid crisis. Before we get into the dashboard, I want to show you around the data a little bit. I encourage you to read the blog that accompanies this video and it, as it has a lot more details around a lot of the research that we did for it. The video is just supposed to be a quick walk around and look under the hood sort of thing. So let's start with the data that we received. We had about five columns. They all took a fair bit of wrangling. It was performed within Spotfire using the easy access data panel that I'm just showing you. And through TIPCO Enterprise Runtime for R, so we connected directly to the Google Sheets and we were able to clean it out. So starting with the table, um, we can see that Spotfire nicely categorizes the type of fields for me. So I have time-based uh, fields, location, categories, and uh, measurements and numbers. Now, I didn't get the data like this. I actually received it um, with these columns unpivoted. So if I right-click them and say, um, on pivot, you would see what it looked like in the original data. So going back to the source view, um, I can edit this transform right from the easy access menu and this just provides you a detailed look at it. There's also the right click way of doing it. Once we got that, I added the hierarchy, I added calculated columns. You can see that Spotify is really nice around preserving all of these uh, recipe transformations for me. So let's go in and look at the percent overdose death column. And here you can see that originally we received number of drug overdose deaths and we had number of deaths for that year. And so we just converted it into a percentage to make it more meaningful. I've done several transforms like that within Spotfire for different tables. So for example, this one is around state drug Medicaid and how much each state is contributing. Before so here, in order to uh, do the same sort of calculation, I added um, columns from census, uh, census data. And census data is another table that we received. And so you can see that I changed certain things to identifiers. I calculated the same percentage. I cleaned out one of the string columns because always you end up having a few stray characters. So let's actually look at NDC identifier. And if I go in here, I can use the expanded uh, expression and just use it like any other function. So I, can, I have a concatenate over here. And all of the string functions, or even statistical functions, will be within this. You have a number of categories. The other table that's interesting is opioid provider info. This is the one that we're using a lot. We have um, information around opioid prescription rate. We have information around extended release, how much people have claimed for the states are. So if you look at the state, right, and we're still on the data panel. So this is honestly until now it's not touched any charts and just showing you exploratory analysis. And you can already see that there's a lot that we can get out of here. So for example, the US doesn't have 61 states. And if you look closely, you'll find that there are a lot of states that are just unrecognized, the XX, AA. Um, some of these are actually military codes. So they use stand for military bases, either on the Pacific, that would be AP, and so on. So you have these codes that are interspersed with your state. So when we're creating our dashboards, we have to be very careful around things like this. And it's very easy to discover it through Spotfire. Going into the dashboard, um, there were uh, upwards of 2.7 million deaths in 2016 and 17. 66,000 of them were drug overdoses. That's 183 overdose deaths every day, out of which one uh, out of 41 of all deaths was drug overdose related. Uh, what's more is that despite having these 
strong statistics. These numbers are still underrepresented because there just isn't enough data collection around some of the more specific features. So looking at the percent death due to overdose, the same column, we created a bar chart and we lined it up by the different uh, drugs. Uh, let's go into the properties and let me show you the y-axis. So the same expression functions that we saw, I was able to, uh, from starting at the actual counts of it, I went in and created, you know, the normalization of it. And we're displaying it as percent, and we've been able to label it directly without having a two-step process of where you define your label separately and then you mark it separately. You can see that opioids and synthetic opioids, they exceed the others, um, others by a vast amount. Now, heroin and methadone, they're also opiates, so the color scheme reflects the similarity. And they tend to be pretty high, but these are the high-level groups that we'll be focusing on. So uh, opioids basically reward your brain. They activate your brain's reward center. So they create a dependency and they create a feeling of euphoria. Because of that, they use a lot in pain management. If you have surgery, you end up with an opioid prescription to help you cope with the post-surgical pain. But um, the rates at which these prescriptions are given out in the U.S. are much higher than a lot of the other countries that tend to favor more holistic methods like physiotherapy. So there's two classes of prescriptions. One is your um, just your prescribing rate. Out of all the prescriptions that you can give out, how many of them are opioid related? And the other class of prescriptions is extended release. So extended release opioids are considered generally safe because you can't break them and like get an instant high from them. So it's hard to abuse it, but it takes the body a lot longer to push it out of the system. So that's why we're monitoring both. So in the dashboard, you can see that each marker is a physical location of a provider. And color indicates um, how much of their prescription rate is uh, just giving out opioid prescriptions. And then the size is how much of that is just the extended release opioid. So I start with 11 because uh, that's the average prescription rate. So now we're just looking at people that prescribe higher than average. So we're at 70%, 23%. You're just going to keep increasing it, and you'll see that, you know, even at 44, 45, 50%, so every second prescription that you're giving out is an opioid related prescription. Even at 50%, we have a lot of dense data. There's a lot of data points, and this is at 70%. So even at 70%, you see that this is a huge pocket, and all of these are extended release opioids, even in Hawaii. So from looking at like at what rate people are giving out prescriptions, let's take a minute and look at who is giving these prescriptions. So here I've got opioid prescription percent by specialty, and I've got extended release prescription percent by specialty. In both of these, the fields that are highlighted, they are basically fields that it's well documented in opioid abuse research that these are fields known for overprescription. Not just that, um, a lot of these fields, for example, if you look at naturopaths or if you look at acupuncturists, if you're a licensed acupuncturist, then in most states, you just can't write prescriptions that have any drugs in them. Yes, when you collect the statistics, we're seeing that the, this is the fifth highest extended release prescribing specialties. So those are some very disturbing patterns to notice in the data.